In this video, you will learn how to create infinite carousels with a simple CSS trick. The challenge is this. How can we make an animation where once the last element scrolls out, the first one shows up again, so that the animation can loop forever? You see this very often for logo animations, testimonials and stuff like that. Here's how it's done. In HTML, you need a container and some child elements. These are just cards with numbers so that we know which one is the first and last element. But for our trick, we're going to need an additional wrapper element around our cards. I call this one group. You will soon see why this is important. So we have a container, a group, and cards. In CSS, I have some very basic settings, and I also apply a border to the carousel so that we can see where it is. Now to the important stats. In the group, we use display flex to line up the child elements side by side. On the child elements, you want to disable their flex grow and flex shrink behavior. So they should not resize responsively and instead overflow the carousel container. You can do that using the flex shorthand where we also apply a flex basis. I have a separate video on the flex shorthand if you need a refresher on this topic. Now, instead of having to scroll the entire website horizontally, I want to play an animation within the carousel. So let's apply overflow X auto. And very importantly, I'm applying this on the carousel, not on the group container. That will make the carousel scrollable as you can see in the browser. I will also remove the scroll bar using display none. That way we can focus on the animation. We want to move the cards to the left side, out of screen but at the same time, move in the same cards again from the right side. We create an animation using add keyframes and name it spin. Inside, we simply say from translate zero. We want to animate to translate negative 100%. Now, very importantly, we apply this animation to the group container. And I hope it becomes clear why we need that extra wrapper. Because the outer container, which is the carousel, should simply handle the overflow. The group is the one that should be moved within the container. Let's say this animation should be 5 seconds long. It also should be infinite and linear. Now you can see how this group is moved out of the screen and it jumps right back. It is doing this infinitely. So what we now need is another group coming from the right side and it should be exactly the same group. So in HTML, I simply copy and paste the entire group to have a duplicate. On that second group, I will also apply aria hidden because this one should be ignored by accessibility tools. We only need this duplicate container for styling purposes to make the animation work. Now, if we take a look at the browser window, we can see how this animation is almost perfect. Our animation is moving the group container to the left, revealing the second group. And once the animation ends, it jumps back to the beginning of the animation. And because both groups are identical, the user doesn't notice the jump. So it looks infinite. But the animation is not perfect yet. We are missing this gap between the two groups. As you can see in our Flexbook layout, we have a gap of 1 EM between the cards. But of course, this gap does not apply to the groups. And here it is important that you don't make the mistake to apply the gap in the carousel, because having a gap between the groups will mess up the animation. Now, if I do this on purpose, you can see how the gap is working, but it is also causing a slight jump whenever the animation repeats. That is because the duplicate is no longer perfectly aligned with the original group, because the gap is moving it back by 1 EM. To fix this, we shouldn't apply any margin or gap outside of the cards and instead apply a padding inside. Using padding right of 1 EM will add a bit of spacing at the end of the group, which is accounted for in the 100% calculation we use in the animation when we translate it back. That way, the animation works perfectly. And if we take a look at the styles for the cards, you can see how I used the flex shorthand with flex 005 EM. And many beginners get confused about it because the syntax of this property isn't very intuitive. But stuff like this is used all the time in CSS. So if you finally want to understand how the flex shorthand and flex grow, flex shrink and flex spaces work together, then watch this video right here. My name is Fabian and this was Coding2Go. I will see you in the next video.